It's time for Tuesday Terror, here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that all children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. I'm dropping from the sky into the open branches of a dead tree as they snap and slow my fall from the grey, dusty ground below. <coughs> Everything is dead here. The trees barren, the sky is like stone. I turn and see the greenish-black fog bank stretching off and away, like a giant wall. This feels... familiar. It should. You've been here before. This is the edge of the multiverse. He sits in a large wicker chair and is sipping a blue exotic drink. He places it on a nearby table and sits back in the chair. The Vaudeville Man. You know that's not my name, right? Oh, it might be how I like to dress, but... I do have a real name. Really? So what do they call you? For the moment, it's not important. You're the one complaining. By the way, where is Salem? That girl you're traveling with. Safe. For the moment. Suspended in flight, so to speak. While I deal with you... I have to admit, I like her hat. Oh, by the way, did you get the power core back yet? Let's just say it's a work in progress. In other words, no. I didn't really think you would. I mean, it can only crack a planet open like an egg, right? Let's just leave it out there for any Tom, Dick, or Henry to play with. I think it's Tom, Dick, and Harry. Whatever. Anyways. He wants to talk to you, Byron. I was sent to retrieve you. Who wants to talk to me? Who the hell do you think? Him! The big guy! The one behind the curtain and all that. I see. So why didn't he come himself? Because he can't, Byron. You see... Barry is dying. The realm is known by many names, but the most common, heaven. When last I was here, it was the end of everything. The universe had been set ablaze, only heaven remained. It was the final day of the Great War of Heaven. That day, that final moment, with a sword raised prepared to deliver the death blow to the Creator himself, everything I was changed. A moment of rationality? An epiphany born of chaos. I still don't know what stopped me. Only that I surrendered to the will of God and betrayed my allies. And now, following the vaudeville man through the vortex and light back to that realm, I see that contempt on their faces. The seraphim watch me from a distance. A thing like me, here. In the most sacred of places, I keep moving and focus on the vaudeville man. How can he be dying? I'll let him explain it to you when you see him. But it doesn't make sense. Barry is eternal. No beginning and no end. An interesting point of view, coming from the man who almost killed him. What was that thing your brother Slate always says? All things face an ending. 
Believe me, pale man. Even God can die. But what's causing it? Do you remember the first time you and I met? Yes, in a bizarre dream. There was this giant fog bank that... Wait. Wait just a... M just a moment. The fog bank. Was that the expanse? And you figured it out at last. Yes, Byron. That fog bank is the expanse. What you remember was the moment it started moving into our reality. But there was something else I told you then. Something very important. Do you remember what it was? The vaudeville man stares at me, waiting for me to respond. But dreams are such fleeting things, often forgotten when a person waits. I asked a question. You said God was the only being to ever go into the Expanse and come back out of it. That's right. What he saw in there really freaked him out, let me tell you. But what was it? Well, how the hell should I know? You know, Dad, he only tells people what he wants them to know. But now, for some reason that boggles my mind, he wants to talk to you about it. Really boggles the mind. We walk in silence for some time after that, until we arrive at a crystal spire. It stretches upward into infinity. In front of two large golden doors is an archangel that stands well over ten feet. Her wings are razor-thin swords that catch the light. A burning warhammer is gripped tightly in her hands. She has no place here. Whoa! Whoa! Michael! Put that down! Hey! Mike! 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 Look at me! Ah, uh, hey, I'm with you on this. If it were up to me, I'd get some cricket bats and let you play with his entrails. But Dad wants to chat with the bastard. It's so nice to be loved. You'll find no love from me, pale man. Abomination. Father should have disposed of you when he had the chance. That chance was mine. So you know what I'm capable of, you might want to reassess your options. Now why don't you buff your wings while I have a friendly chat with your pop? You disrespectful wretch! Do you know who I am? I'll give it a rest. Yes, I know who you are. The Archangel Michael, she who tossed Lucifer and his minions into the pit to slow roast for all eternity. I also know you and the others are not allowed to harm me. A decree from your dad. Now stop wasting our time. Ah, uh, I hate it when he has a point. Michael, I bid thee stand down. My lord, but you, pale-skinned atrocity, a time will come when you and I will... What? Go dancing, see a movie, have dinner. Buy me a drink, at least. I'm not a cheap date. Ugh! You may pass. The interior of the spire is a vast, empty white space. A testament, if you will, to a fundamental lack of imagination. I've never understood why powerful beings enjoy this kind of layout. Is it supposed to leave their visitor in a state of awe? Perhaps wonder? The only objects with us are a cat tree and a plastic chair. An old, mangy black cat sits like a meatloaf on top of the tree. Still going with the cat thing, I see. It's a weird look for him. Always thought Can he should... Can you at least attempt to show him some level of respect? Hey, you dragged me here, remember? I had other things to do. You pasty-faced moron! Is that the only reason you're here? To moan and complain? Oh, give me another option, circus boy. Stop! 
children. The pair of you. Byron, I'm glad you came. Barry, <laughs> you look better. Yes. I should have someone get these mats out of my fur. <laughs> They've begun to pinch at me. <laughs> and I itch. <laughs> You may leave us, old friend. Is that wise, sir? I still don't trust the pale man. Uh, if you do, sensible enough. But there is no time for that. Go now. We will speak again. Soon. As you wish, sir. Do try and be civil for once. There's a good chap. Charming fellow, wherever did you find him? <laughs> he, he means well. A quaint little expression about roads and good intentions is coming to mind. <coughs> I did not greet you in person. Forgive me. I find movement uh, difficult these days. You uh, do not look pleased, my old friend. Old friend. Well, it's not as if you lied to me for centuries, used me, manipulated me to do your heavenly wet work for you so you could keep your paws clean. Oh, wait. You did. Byron, only you could do what I needed to be done. Oh, yeah? So being driven insane and calling myself Vastator was what? A fringe benefit? Byron... <laughs> I'm dying. I... I need your help. Drive someone else crazy. I'm not interested. <laughs> of course you are. You simply don't know it yet. What are you talking about? The Expanse. Walk away now, and you'll never know what the Expanse is. You know, you've always used my curiosity to get what you want from me. We all wish to live, and you are forever curious. I should know, Byron. Fine. Let's chat. Will tea be served, or is that too much to ask? Do help yourself to cream and sugar. I do not drink milk. Hmm. So the Expanse is destroying the multiverse. I assume this is why you're dying as well. Yes. As each universe dies, my being fades with it. Makes sense. Creation is just an extension of your being. We are one, yet apart. Uh, but now I am powerless to stop the Expanse. So what is it? The vaudeville man told me it was here long before creation. And you were the only being ever to pass into the fog and come out again. Yes. My encounter with it long ago. It was uh, curiosity at first. Something that my power couldn't affect. For eons, I have studied it. Those I sent in never came out again. This mystery, this... Plaything finally began to vex me. In the end, if I was ever going to understand what it was, I had to go into the fog myself. What did you see in there? Nothing at first. Just green fog. But as I passed through the other side, I saw another reality, Byron. Dimensions of... N not chaos, pure madness. Places where every dark deed, every fear, every wicked act are made real. Worlds without hope or reason, creatures born of darkness and hate. There were no golden ratios in their cosmic architecture, only horrors, and all of it, 
It was all outside of my realm of influence. I had no control there. That terrified me. <laughs> Fascinating. How was it all created? How did it even start? I do not know. The fog bank is nothing more than a boundary, an event horizon that keeps the two realities apart from one another. But it's moving now, expanding into the multiverse. Why? I... I can't be certain, but it must have something to do with you. Regrettably, this is not the first time I've been told my actions, or in some cases inactions, have triggered a calamity. The fall of the Roman Empire came about because I shirked my responsibility as the steward of autumn. But triggering the collapse of all creation, well, that was new. What do you mean, something to do with me? Universes are born and die all the time. It's the normal cycle. But if the cycle is interrupted, or broken, a universe dies before its time, decimated by powerful forces that were never meant to be unleashed, like you did. The reality crystal? Precisely. While it was in yours, or rather, Vastator's hands, he used it to destroy everything in your universe. But I also used the crystal to restore the universe to its original form. Your goal, perhaps. A worthy one. Are you saying it didn't happen? I can tell you this. Just after your universe was restored, at that very same moment, the Expanse began consuming the multiverse. Quite the coincidence, don't you think? A coincidence? You're saying Vastator did something... He caused this. But that's not possible. I've never even heard of the Expanse until now. How would Vastator know? Do you recall everything you did as Vastator? I... Oh, I, I wasn't exactly in the right frame of mind at the time. Precisely. If Vastator knew of the Expanse and made contingencies in case... He failed. No, 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 no. I, I, I would re remember that. Wouldn't I? <laughs> this is why I need you, Byron. The Expanse has a link with you. You may be our only hope of stopping it before all of creation is wiped out. So, no pressure, right? I assume there's no way to retrieve the Reality Stone. It would probably be extremely useful in this situation. No. If we tried to do that, it would... Destroy all time and space and ruin Christmas. All right, all right. Fine. Fine. I'll see what I can do. As I knew you would. I'm... I'm sorry about this next bit. About what? There is no easy way for you to return to your new friends. So your landing may be... A little... rough. Good luck, Byron. We're counting on you. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. I'm sure he'll be fine. Landing, I guess. Mm. B Byron, where are you? I'm in here. Oh, that's wet. Coffee grounds, banana peels. Hell is this? A rubbish dip. <laughs> You're in a trash dumpster. Here, let me help you out. Oh, I swear these landings are getting ridiculous does leave something to be desired. 
Hmm. This isn't the right place. I programmed the handle to take us to Earth Prime, but... Now, this is alarming. What's happened? I'm getting an orange alert. So, orange is bad? Oh dear. Uh, we, we were drawn off course, and no wonder why. Salem starts walking. I quickly follow after her. The streets of the city are abandoned. It's clear this is Portland, another Portland, not my own. We turn a corner. Before us, the streets are littered in bodies. Corpses of people who have been ripped apart. The ground is painted with their blood. No. No, this can't be happening here. It just... It just can't. Salem, what's happening? Where are we? Earth. Earth Prime. Home of the faction. I figured that, but what's happened to these people? Salem? Salem? She turns her gaze to the bridges that run across the Willamette River. She stands still in a frozen state of shock. I guess deep down I already knew what I was going to see. Much of Portland is drowning in a massive green fog bank. As it slowly curls towards us, I can hear the ghostly voices of those who've fallen before. The expanse had begun to consume Earth Prime. Listening to the Byron Chronicles, The Chaos Faction, Part 4, written by Eric Busby. Featured in the cast were David Alt as Byron, Sarah Ray Werner as Salem, The Vaudeville Man was portrayed by Mark Kalita, Barry was portrayed by Victor Aurelius, and Michael was voiced by Kara Scott. The script editor was Joe Medina, music performed by Kevin McLeod. Adrian Von Ziegler and Co.Ag Music. Byron Theme by Kai Hartwig. This is Darren Marlar. You've been listening to an Eric Busby production. Copyright Eric Busby Presents 2019. Bolt your doors. Lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the Weird Darkness. I'm Darren Marlar, the creator and host of Weird Darkness, bringing you true stories of the paranormal, supernatural, mysterious, macabre, unsolved, and unexplained. New episodes seven days a week. Get the podcast at WeirdDarkness.com or search for Weird Darkness in your favorite podcast app. For a spine tingling, nerve shattering podcast featuring all your favorite monsters. You won't believe your ears when you listen to Monster, Monster Kid, Kid Radio. Radio. Hear your host, Derek M. Cook, and his ever rotating stable of guests discuss your favorite classic and sometimes not so classic monster movies. Subscribe to Monster Kid Radio through iTunes or Stitcher, or visit monsterkidradio.net before the next weekly episode of Monster, Monster Kid, Kid Radio. Radio. Go through the archives for interviews with Sarah Karloff, Victoria Price, and Joel Hodgson. Listen to discussions about movies like Creature from the Black Lagoon, Island of Terror, and King Kong. And don't forget convention coverage from Monster Bash and the HP Lovecraft Film Festival. Classic monsters, modern talk, and the head of Rondo Hatton, only on Monster, monster Kid Radio! This probably isn't really worth noting, but during my final radiation tests of the day, I saw a blip out in the opposite direction of Ra. It's a bright light with the pinpoint clarity of a star, but obviously it's not a star since it wasn't there yesterday. 
or even a few hours ago. Also, it's moving. Charlotte's taking this new development with all the grace of a garbage fire. She barged in on her hydraulic arm while I was checking Ra's radiation emissions earlier and started reciting the entire Caldwell Enterprises emergency preparedness manual to me from start to finish. I took that to mean that she thinks the incoming light is a matter of some concern. I told her to be more optimistic, that it might not be coming directly toward us, that it could simply be a mirage, that she technically doesn't have a death to fear, but she just started reciting the manual all over again from the beginning. So I wedged a fallen tree branch up into the hydraulic tracks to block her from exiting the glass house. Season 1 of Girl in Space launches September 18th, 2017, with a new episode every two weeks. Subscribe using your favorite podcast app or stream episodes at girlinspacepodcast.com. It's all here in space. Chauncey Haworth, Mark Slade, and Lothar Tuppen. The demented minds behind the Twisted Pulp Radio Hour bring you... Twisted Pulp Magazine. A journey beyond surreality to worlds you never knew or hoped existed. Worlds of the supernatural. Worlds of dark satire. Worlds of nightmarish futures. Twisted Pulp Magazine. If you thought the 21st century was weird enough already... Think again. Twisted Pulp Magazine. A step beyond your grandfather's pulp. Available at digitalvaudeville.com. That's D I G I T A L V A U D E V I L L E dot com. (laughs) 